today I want to show you how I painted this watercolour landscape with a very dramatic cloudy sky uh, using a very limited palette and also some water soluble graphite. Hope you find it interesting and I'll see you at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just mark out where the landscape is on here. It sort of tapers over this way. And it's very dark against the sky and the water. And then there's grasses here, which I can sort of draw in. I'm using a water soluble graphite stick. Um, so it's pure graphi graphite. Um, like you'd get in a pencil, but it will dissolve in water. So I can use or re retain as much or as little of this as I want to when I add the watercolour to the painting. So that gives me a bit of a road map now of where to go. The next thing I'm going to do is use whoops, a flat square brush. I'm just going to wet the paper. Uh, Slightly dirty brush, but that really doesn't matter too much. A little bit grey from the previous painting. So I'm going to put lots of colour in here. I'm doing it roughly because I don't want a dead flat wash, so a bit of life in the brush marks is fine. <laughs> and you can see it's sort of loosening that graphite there. Um, and just, I will show you my colour chart here for the watercolour set that I've got. This is a really nice thing to do when you get your watercolours is to actually sort of paint a little uh, square of each colour and give it its name and then you can see exactly what's in the set that you've got and it gives you lots of good ideas. What I want to do next, I think I'm going to um, paint onto this in a washy sort of way with some raw sienna. No, maybe I'll go for cadmium yellow because that's a bit more golden. There is some nice, I'll put that aside, sorry, uh, glowing sunlight. I'm just going to clean that colour a bit because it's not terribly keen. I do not want green in the sky. So I'm going to put this yellow on and then I'm going to lift it out to create the light. I just want it in some of the sky. So it'll help, I hope, to show the warmth, the warm sunlight coming through and take it down here too. And just soften it here and there so I can lift that out. I've got some clean kitchen roll here. So I can just lighten that too. I'm just sort of dabbing in where the light cuts through there and also on the water. Just lifting that a little bit too. Okay, now let's see how wet that is if I tilt the board. I can see the shiny wet areas like down here there's puddles here so I want to keep the paint off of that but actually the top part is okay it's not too bad at the moment if you can see puddles on it you know there's an awful lot of water sitting there and it will dilute and make your paint spread and possibly turn into cauliflowers so rinse that brush and pick up another one so it's um it's an artificial bristle on there but it's a good all-rounder that brush and I'm looking at my chart here and thinking about colours for the clouds I think I'm going to use the Mars brown and ultramarine blue to make a sort of dark grey we'll see how that comes out and um, that's a nice brown actually nice and rich and warm and then if I put ultramarine with it, 
And while I'm doing this, obviously this is all getting drier. Um, and it's sort of drying from the top down because I've got the board propped on. It's actually a laptop ledge. So it props the board at a sort of perfect 45 degree angle. Uh, so any paint you put on will gradually sort of run down. It tilts it towards you too, so you get a better view of your own work. I'm going to put on these dark clouds now. I'm hoping that's dark enough to make it a little bit more. Oops. You always need plenty of paint. You use a lot doing this. That's nice, okay. And it's not thoroughly mixed. I'm hoping I'll get a little bit of variety coming off the brush. And I'm rolling the brush across. I'm just going to put a little bit more water in places too. And hopefully that will describe the lights and darks in the clouds as I come across. Go right up to the edges too. You can go over the edges a little bit, but you, know, you don't want your clouds to be sort of within the frame. Obviously they're much bigger than that, so they'll go over the edges. I'm using a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, just to try and get the variety of tones in the cloud. It gets dark and dense in the middle here, but then lighter at the edges where the sunlight is coming through. Draw that down here too. It doesn't have to be exactly like the photo, but it's got to have the same kind of feel because, you know, that's what we're dealing with. So I'm kind of softening the edges a bit. I can dry the brush, rinse it and dry it. I don't want all these spots around the edges, so I can just take those up with a sort of damp brush and it'll pick up a lot of the dribbles and splodges. And again, you know, dip dip and blot all the time with the brush. That's nice and that yellow is doing a nice job underneath there too. Uh, and I've got a little bit more colour. I'll put this underneath here now. So this is, I'm hoping, I need that slightly lighter as it comes down the sky I think. Um, I'm going to put that on, water it down and put it on up to the big cloud and then lift it out because there's such soft edges on here. I need more colour. So I know I used ultramarine blue and Mars brown. Um, each brand of paint seems to have its own name for certain colours. So this is the White Knights watercolour set that I've used before on my videos and they um, seem to have some names that are unusual for their colours. A little bit more blue in there. Get that across here. Oh, it's blotted on it. Take that off. Doesn't matter too much. And then getting lighter as we go down. And I can lift out using dry kitchen roll to soften those edges. Take the tabs off. Don't fiddle about with it too much. Ideally, you put the paint on and leave it alone. Darker down here. And pick up. Actually, I'm going to take those right down into the landscape. Because the sky does come down to the landscape, not surprisingly. Uh, and I think I can go back over that and darken it. But I think it's quite good to take the clouds down. Okay, and now I need to think about the water, so I'm going to use the same mix. So French Ultramarine and Mars Brown. Um, and just have it, because I want it lighter, I'm putting more water into the paint. With watercolours you use, oh that's very dark, use the, the whiteness of the paper to create light in the painting. You don't generally add white. 
because that makes the paint go opaque and then it's not watercolour anymore. So if you want your paints lighter, your colours lighter, you just make them more watery. Okay. And again, I'm going to let that go over that front edge too. And then Take a little bit of that up there, I think. Make a little bit more of that cloud. Just so that this hasn't got too hard an edge on it, this shape. And then the dry kitchen roll. My paper is really bulging where it's wet, so I'm going to let it dry for a minute. Okay, I'll let that dry. Okay, all I have to do now is put the dark back into the landscape and I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush and I want to use I think a bit more of the Mars Brown make it a little bit stronger this time because I want this to stand out um, like a silhouette almost but not entirely flat but it's certainly silhouetted against the light sky Mars Brown and French Ultramarine Blue and I want to put that in at the back here. I'm just, I've got the brush on its side and I've, I've got a kind of handlebar grip here because I don't want this to be too strong and too solid so I'm kind of letting it scuff across the bumps in the paper a little bit as I put this on, just find some of the shape in the landscape there. Mark making is everything with watercolours. If you can put things down with the right mark, it does a lot of the work for you. Go right up to the edges again. I'm going to mix up a little bit more French Ultramarine and Mars Brown. Um, make it slightly browner in the foreground because that will bring it forward. So the warmth of that will bring it into the foreground a little bit. And again, so I'm using sort of up and down movement for these bits of grass in the foreground and I can scratch with my nail. Need a bit more paint. And it gets higher here. I'm going to use my old brush handle to suggest this spiky grassy edge here. That's dried off now. When it's wet you can drag it up and create textures in it and the paint will be drawn to the scratched line. If you scratch into drier paint, it leaves a white mark. If you scratch into wet paint, it will be a dark mark. And I can put more paint on there too, which will make these darker again.
can scratch through those. So each clump of grass has its own reflection in there. Okay, um, I'm just going to stop and have a look at that. I'm just going to darken that bit of foreground. Um, it's good to stand up and have a look from a distance at your work and get a sense of what's going on. Um, I think I'm going to use... This is a filbert brush. Quite a large brush, but I'm hoping it will give me the right shape. So there's some dark reflections of the clouds in the foreground that help to make the water look brighter um, more shiny because of the contrast. This darkness in the foreground contrasts with the the light on the water. So I'm going to try and get that in. It's like blue too because of the the sky. So a touch of brown, but mostly French ultramarine. And then that comes across here. Um, and going back there. And there's some little ripples over here. few little pylons in the distance and I'm just going to suggest those. Whoops. It's a watered down, a watered down version of this foreground. Just drag out some of that a little bit and put in a few of those little, just see how dark that is. I can test it on here so I can just water that down a bit more. Just want it to be quite light. And just put in some of these things on the skyline. Lots of pylons in this landscape. And one over here. That's it. That will do. I've had a bit more of a look at this and I want to just add a few more bits. I'm going to use uh, more of the soluble graphite and I want to bring some uh, stronger tones to the landscape in particular um, because I feel like this will benefit from beefing up a little bit. When the darks work well, everything else works better too. So I'm just going to darken this with the soluble graphite and you can use any water soluble pencils or ink in this way. Just work back into your watercolours. Whoops. Um, rather than keep adding watercolour because that can sort of take some of the life out of the work. I really want this foreground to be dark too. This is a 4B, yeah, 4B, so it's fairly soft. And also, I think I'm going to put more uh, into the sky, more cloud darkness because as it's dried this has gone quite pale and I think this could really do with building up a bit. We'll see how it goes. Might all go horribly wrong and then I'll do another one. <laughs> okay. In fact I'm going to wet it with water first.
Patience is a big thing with watercolours because they can easily get overdone. Uh, and go wrong. So you've got to be prepared to have a few goes. Right. Using a different brush, but it seems to be going okay. Of course, they dry about 15% lighter than when you put them on which also complicates things and different colours dry at different rates. So you've got to bear all of that in mind as well as you work on them. This is dark down here too. That's better. So not having dribbles at the bottom is important for this. So as they dribble down, I'm kind of picking them up and working them across those blobs. I'm trying to keep the edges soft. I'll see if I can soften this more and lift out. Just dip that in the water, see if I can lift out a little bit. That bit of light there seems important. brush. I'm just going to soften this bit here too. Bit of a hard edge. Yeah, I like that better now. If it stays that way. Obviously this paint drifts and soaks in and moves around as it dries. But I'm not going to try it with the hairdryer this time because I want the paint to flow a bit. The hairdryer kind of halts it in its tracks, so I do want it to flow a little bit. Um, I think this is going to be okay this time. Okay. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please click subscribe and like at the end. And I hope to see you again. Bye bye. <laughs>